Tesla has made some bold claims about their new semi-truck, and today we're gonna test those. In a recent event where Tesla announced the first deliveries of their semi-truck, they claimed to make a 500 mile trip from Fremont to San Diego, California, where they only used about 93% of the battery capacity. So let's start by using the characteristics of the truck to calculate the theoretical power required to move it down the road. So the two forces that act on the truck are air resistance and rolling resistance. You can see the equations below, which might not make much sense yet. So for the Tesla Semi, we know it weighs 82,000 pounds at full load. That's gonna be our mass. It has a coefficient of drag of 0.36. We don't know the frontal area, but I'm gonna estimate it at 9.85 square meters, and that's based on the dimensions of a trailer. Coefficient of rolling resistance is extremely hard to get an accurate value, but I've looked at various research papers and the values vary between 0.005 and 0.008. So we're gonna use 0.006 as a nice middle ground. When you plug in all of our parameters into the forces equation, you see that force at any velocity is equal to 2.13 V squared, velocity squared, plus 2,188.7, and that's all gonna be in Newtons because it's a force. So we could plug in any velocity into this equation, like 50 miles an hour, and that would tell us the actual forces that are acting on the truck to slow it down. Another cool thing we can do with this equation is turn it into a power equation. There's a really simple equation in physics, power is equal to force times velocity. So our power required at any speed becomes 2.13 V cubed plus 2,188.7 times V. So in California, the speed limit for semi trucks is 55 miles an hour, and that's the speed we're gonna use. So power required to overcome forces at 55 miles an hour is really easy to calculate now. We just plug that into our equation and we see that it takes about 32 kilowatts to overcome air resistance and about 54 kilowatts to overcome rolling resistance for a total power to overcome forces of about 85 and a half kilowatts. We know EVs are not 100% efficient, so we need to account for powertrain loss. We're gonna use a 90% efficiency figure. And with that, we see that we actually need to pull about 95 kilowatts from the battery to maintain 55 miles an hour on flat ground. When you think about it, 127 horsepower really isn't that much to keep something so big moving at 55 miles an hour. It's actually pretty impressive. And since we know the power requirements, we can easily calculate range. And so if you wanna travel 500 miles, it'll take 9.1 hours. You multiply 9.1 hours by your power, 95, and you see that you would use about 865 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. This is shockingly close to what Elon Musk tweeted. He said that the semi is using about 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile. So I'm gonna assume that that's actually calculated at 55 miles an hour, which is very, very close to the results we got here. In my opinion, an efficiency claim without a speed reference doesn't really mean a whole lot. If you've ever driven an EV, you've probably experienced this. To illustrate that, I've calculated efficiencies using our equation at various speeds. At 40 miles an hour, our efficiency is about 1.4 kilowatt hours per mile. At 50 miles an hour, 1.6. At 60 miles an hour, 1.85 and at 70 miles an hour, it goes above two. So using that 55 mile an hour assumption, this truck has roughly a 900 kilowatt hour battery pack. This is where things get really interesting when we're going up and down hills. So we're first gonna look at a traditional diesel semi truck to set some context. We're gonna say this truck is going up a 5% grade carrying a full payload weighing in at 80,000 pounds. We can see from the diagram below Air resistance and rolling resistance is acting in the negative direction as it is on flat ground, but now we have a weight component also acting in the negative direction. So how much power is required to keep this truck going at 30 miles an hour up this steep grid? We're gonna use the exact same steps as before. We have our air resistance, 0.5 times 1.2, which is air density, multiplied by velocity squared, multiplied by 0.6, which is our estimated coefficient of drag for a diesel semi truck, multiplied by our same frontal area. We're just gonna use the same value, 9.85 square meters. Rolling resistance is virtually the same, except instead of 82,000 pounds, it weighs 80,000 pounds. And now we're introducing the third element because there's a slope, 
and that's the force from the weight of the truck pulling down. So in this case, a 5% grade means for every 100 feet of horizontal distance, there's five feet of vertical distance. If you've ever taken an algebra class, it's the same thing as rise over run. Rise is five, run is 100. So rise over run in this case is 0 0.05. We multiply that by our weight and we multiply that by acceleration from gravity. And we see that all of those forces add up to 20,565 newtons. And you can see that the weight force is massive compared to the air resistance force and the rolling resistance force. And this illustrates how hard it is to carry a lot of weight up a hill. So using the same method as before, we multiply by velocity again to get our power. And we see that power to maintain this 30 miles an hour at full 80,000 pounds is about 288 kilowatts. A diesel truck is not as efficient as an electric truck. We're gonna assume about an 80% drivetrain efficiency. And that means that diesel engine is gonna to have to make about 479 horsepower to maintain just 30 miles an hour up this grade. And most diesel trucks don't even make 480 horsepower. They make somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 to 450. So this scenario would actually be a bit of a struggle for a diesel truck and it would probably be doing as little as 20 or 25 miles an hour. Now let's do the same scenario for the Tesla Semi. We add 2000 pounds because of the increased weight limit due to it being an EV. Our coefficient of drag goes down to 0.4. Everything else is pretty much the same just with our increased weight. And we see that we need about 280 kilowatts to maintain our 30 miles an hour going up the slope which is basically the same as before. I think it's two kilowatts more, but the electric powertrain is more efficient. So if you take 90% efficiency, you see that the actual battery output only needs to be about 311 kilowatts or about 417 horsepower. And we know the plaid powertrain is capable of at least a thousand horsepower. So at 417 horsepower, this thing is not even close to straining. Whereas an average diesel truck would be having a very hard time going up this grid. 30 miles an hour clearly isn't much. Let's see if the Tesla semi could maintain that 55 mile an hour speed limit going up this 5% grade fully loaded. So all the conditions are the same now, except we're going 55 miles an hour up this grade. You can see our total forces come out to 21,857 Newtons. We're gonna multiply by our velocity to get power. And we see that power to maintain this 55 miles an hour is 537 kilowatts. Accounting for 90% efficiency, that becomes just under 600 kilowatts which is equivalent to 800 horsepower. So at 55 miles an hour up a 5% grade weighing 82,000 pounds, this Tesla Semi is still not even close to the limit of its power. So uphill's pretty cool, but downhill gets even cooler. So electric cars have the ability to regenerate power. Their electric motors basically turn into generators and turn that kinetic energy back into potential energy. I've set up basically the downhill scenario of before, 5% grade fully loaded going 55 miles an hour. But this time we have our weight force acting in the positive direction. So our forces come out to being exactly the same. Air resistance and rolling resistance are acting in the negative direction on the truck. The horizontal component of the weight force is acting in the positive direction of the truck. So net forces on the truck come out to 14,622 Newtons. We see that power to keep the truck stationary, this is in the negative direction. So if you had someone pushing on the front of the truck is 360 kilowatts, but again, need to account for 90% powertrain efficiency. So in this case, we're actually gonna be multiplying by 0.9. And we see that regen in this scenario is 324 kilowatts. And that's while maintaining 55 miles an hour, not slowing down. To illustrate how crazy the regen is, I've set up a hypothetical situation where a Tesla semi drives up to a 5,000 foot summit. It loads in two Model 3s, and then it's gonna drive down the mountain and put all of its regen power into charging those two Model 3s. It's pretty similar to our scenario before. We have 5,000 feet at a 5% grade. That means the truck's gonna travel about 100,000 feet, which is 18.9 miles. Doing 55 miles an hour, this would take about a third of an hour or 20 minutes. And each of these Model 3s is gonna be able to charge at 162 kilowatts. So this truck is going down this grade, maintaining 55 miles an hour, not speeding up, not slowing down. And it's putting 162 kilowatts into each one of those Model 3s. 
So by the time it gets to the bottom of that mountain, each Model 3 has added about 56 kilowatts of charge. And if you're curious, a Model 3 long range has a battery capacity of about 80 kilowatt hours. So this would be about a 70% charge up. Cool, so let's pull in all of our uphill, downhill regen together. We're setting up a really quick scenario where you go up a hill and then down a hill, and we're gonna see how that impacts efficiency. Very similar conditions. We're going up a 4,000 foot peak, 5% grade, 55 miles an hour, and fully loaded. Based on the grade and the height, distance is gonna be 80,000 feet up and then 80,000 feet down. So it's gonna be 15 miles up, 15 miles down. For the uphill portion, we know how much power it takes to maintain speed, just under 600 kilowatts. So we're gonna use 167 kilowatt hours from the battery to get to the top. And then on our way down, we're gonna be doing all regen. We know we can regen at up to 324 kilowatts. So we're gonna put back in about 91 kilowatt hours into the battery. So total usage comes out to 76 kilowatt hours to go 30 miles and our efficiency jumps up to two and a half kilowatt hours per mile. And this is a great way to understand why regen isn't 100% efficient, because when you're going up the hill, those forces from rolling resistance and air resistance are acting to slow you down. And when you're going down the hill, those same forces are acting against you. So even if the EV was 100% efficient, which it's not, it would be impossible to recover all of the energy you gained going up the hill. I hope you enjoyed the video. In the future, I'm gonna do a series on the powertrain specifics, take a look at those plaid motors and what's going on with the clutch system. Make sure you stay tuned for that, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time.